Today we'll be answering some more of you guys' questions. Some of these were on YouTube, some on Facebook, Instagram. You can keep asking them wherever. We'll answer how do you choose which area to buy in. We'll answer uh, should I be using a real, real estate agent and a lot more questions. So stay tuned, all of those answered after this. Tell us what to look out for when purchasing a property. In other words, if it has issues structurally. So it's difficult to really answer that question just based on structure. Obviously, if you are not, we've bought properties with foundations failing and a bunch of bad issues, roofs not being there as they should. But you have to go up to your own skill level. Um, you cannot buy, so if, if you feel comfortable with retiling, and redoing a bathroom and the plumbing of a bathroom don't look for stuff with issues structurally um, or, or a roof leak or something like that i think that is a space where you can enough. find benefit in being able to to add value yeah. by fixing a roof leak or so when when it's structural like a foundation problem or something Even of that cracks in the walls and you don't really know what you have to it. get an engineer out because we did that a lot in the beginning yes. especially in the beginning we got a lot of engineers and we paid the dues you know to have structural engineers on site and it, it, it eats from your time and, and 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 money as well but but it's worth it um, to make sure you'd rather spend a thousand rand or two thousand rand to get an engineer to a site even if you're planning to buy beforehand and not buy the project than to buy it and have to spend three hundred thousand yes um, of course so so make sure um, you get into stuff where you feel comfortable um, don't get in don't bite off too much and end up with a lemon and if you do sell it to us we'll buy it off you for cheap <laughs> yeah, and you, you don't want to put your name on something that is not in a good state. Yes. Um, because you, you can't just patch up some cracks and sell it and three months down the line they open that again. And, again. Yep. and then you're going to have a bad reputation. Do you guys ever keep some of the properties as rental or only do flips? If you do keep some for rental purpose, what criteria do the kept properties have to meet? Certain rental yield. So yes, we do every now and then keep a property. I must say it's important to, we don't just decide, oh, maybe we'll keep this. Um, it's, it's a process we initiate right from the start. We decide this property will become a rental property and we renovate accordingly. So for instance, there's certain materials you don't want to use with tenants and there's certain materials that's okay to use with tenants and there's other materials that's better to put in a house and certain details that's okay to put in a yeah. house if it's been sold to a homeowner and a family is going to live there versus a tenant that's going to change every yeah. eight months or something a year or like whatever. tiles versus laminate flooring or you take uh, care of your laminate flooring if you are the family that's staying there versus a tenant that just don't yeah. care the same with formica wooden tops and concrete tops uh, or, or granite, granite tops, tops or yeah. a stone top the one will age a lot worse, but is easy to replace and cheap so, to replace. So you have there's, to make there's a that. way up that you have to make, and and also the type of tenant, the type of area, the the price bracket that you are renting out in will will help you make a lot of your decisions. You will know what type of tenant because you get. need to be at a certain level for a certain type of tenant, but then it will also play a role as to how good they will look after your property in most cases. Yeah, a lot of things like uh, wall color as well. If, if you're going to be renting it out, you want something that is easy to patch up, mm -hmm. uh, just to repaint. So white. But you do, you, <laughs> white is the is the option go that, that we go to. Um, I don't think it's always the best no. option. Oh. Sometimes just a bit of uh, off white uh -huh. to gray. It will it will last longer. The type of style we do, we do what? Um, yeah, so it depends on that. And then in terms of yield, that differs. It really depends on appetite for that uh, certain type of investment. And it's really not a one answer suits all uh, type of question. I do want to say, if you are looking for rental properties, 
Um, make sure that your yields are at least meeting what they call the 1% rule. I just say go and Google it, it's a widely known term. Make sure you follow the 1% rule at least. Um, and in my opinion, don't buy a two bed, one bath in a complex with levees and stuff. That's a bad rental property. And I say that because your yields are rubbish. Um, and we, we also think the same about a three bedroom, two bathroom house. And family house. Time, it's, it's just not enough to just have it as is, yes. rent it out to one family. Maybe have a family. garden flat as well, yes. or, 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 or you have to leverage on it in some way. Um, to it's make not, sure it's not always as easy as one thinks you, yes. you have to have a bit of a plan a strategy on how you're going to do it better than it was if it was as easy everyone would be doing it yes it's important to 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 have a proper people think oh i live in a house obviously i can rent a house out as well and you can you just won't definitely make money so it's important to see it as any other business and have a proper strategy for it you wouldn't open up a coffee shop just randomly without a plan and in the same way buy your property in that same way do you guys do pay as you go work or is it a fixed once off premium for all the work i think um the person who asked the question is relating uh, or is speaking about labor I'm not 100 percent sure i don't um, know either but but if it we, is that um we have a variance uh we have some full-time staff, we have some casual labor, and we have some specialists, so like pools, uh, alarms, security, we do with specialists in that field. And then if it is a question from a sense of, do we uh, do work for clients? We don't do work for clients, we only do consultation uh, for clients, we don't do any client renovation work. Will a standard glass sliding door fit if you remove the roller garage door? So I think this question is based on the garage to flat lit conversion video we've shown you guys. Uh, Leroux, maybe you should answer that. We'll, it we'll is list. not 100% standard. Uh, I think a uh, rolling door is about 2.43 by 2.1, uh, something like that. So it will not be 100% standard. It's not just take it out, put another one in. You will need some filler strips or cleats. But, the, or a little but bit that's an easy work. way, right? A 2.1 wide door will close to 2.4. 2.4 uh, by 2.1. So, so just to clarify, standard is a very wide question. Standard, yes. you get a few standard options. So a 2.1 or a 2.4 is a standard size, which you can buy from a local hardware shop. Um, yeah. And it will fit, but and you will you need just some... Put some filler cleats of wood or aluminium or, aluminium. or whatever to fill up the gaps. And there will be a small gap, right? Yes, yes. But it does depend. Don't just take our word for it and say, Big Pond said, <laughs> standard door no. will fit. I'm the easiest the way door. is to measure the space and go for the closest option that is smaller. Yes. It can't be the closest option that That's is bigger. Because a little bit bigger because yeah. you can't take away. It's easier so, to fill up. Just fill the strips on the side. Are you immigrating? Hope not. Would be a tragic loss to the Pretoria property market. No, I was just in the US to look at properties. We are not planning on immigrating. I've had this question personally a few times as well. Um, uh, we were in the US only to look for property investment opportunities. We're not planning on flipping even on that side. And um, the idea is to run uh, investment property from South Africa because it's way cheaper to have admin and everything sitting in South Africa. But it's a good idea if we can earn dollars while doing that. We're not planning on immigrating. All our eggs are at this stage 100% in the South African basket. Hopefully it works. <laughs> Would the black cupboards collect and show dust? Would you consider doing a white kitchen? Or is that not Big Pond style? The paint that you choose for this project will, will determine a lot of your result. I think by choosing the correct cabinet paint or uh, furniture paint will help you with most of the issues here. And I see you also asking about white kitchens. Yes. And the reason for us not really doing white kitchens is the cheapest board that you get, the skeletons of the kitchen are white board. And it, it looks cheap a lot of the time if you just use a white. And if you want to have a really nice white matte board, it becomes, it becomes very super expensive. expensive. So you get a super white, I think that's what it's called. And it's like three times the price of normal Milamin board. 
And again, it's just a question of in the market where we are playing, um, it doesn't make economic sense to just install the most expensive kitchen. It would be um, overcapitalizing on that property. But white kitchens, we do quite a lot if we are painting them. If it's an old wooden kitchen, we like to paint it white because uh, it's very practical and works really well. Um, but like Larry said, furniture paint, non-drip enamel matte, it's the other one we sometimes use. It's basically those types of. But if you go to your local paint shop, they will advise you on a paint that will work for something like wood or whatever your kitchens is. And um, and yeah, they, sometimes with the black it does show dust, but sometimes it's you, you need to get a product that's easily wipeable as well. Yeah, yeah, I think it's if you clean once a week, you should be fine. Yeah. What I would like to renovate my house, what can I do that doesn't require an architect? Super good question. Um, the, the architectural debate comes up quite a lot. Um, so 100% legally, if it's the only question, if, if, if legality 100% is the only question, if you remove your floor tiles and you put laminate in, you have to get your plans updated. If you turn a toilet from there to there, same thing. Yeah. Any change you do to your house, legally 100% the right way is you have to get it updated. Now, there's a bunch of gray areas in this. Certain, a certain time, I think before 1990 or something like that, there was a law that said you can only, you only have to update plans for stuff you do to the exterior. So if you're building on, um, there's, a, there's a few gray areas in this department and it also differs um, based on certain municipalities as to what you need an architect for. Now, also, an architect is a designer. Now, if you can design yourself and you feel comfortable with designing yourself, that's fine. But sometimes, I've got friends who had braai areas designed which they didn't need state or government approved plans for but they just wanted a good design. And that's really important to consider. Maybe it's worth paying an architect or a designer to design that space well for you. Um, and then legalistic plans, um, you know, speak to your local draftsman or architect about what is legal, what is necessary, what's not. Um, there's no black, there is black and white, um, but, but it differs based on a few things. How do you deal with property gains tax? We use certain methods um, like we use investors and they become the person who gets taxed and it's a bit less than a business and there's a few ways you can get out of taxes, not get out of taxes, pay less taxes legally. Um, but again, if, if the, the property gains tax is effect, an effective rate, if you are on a like a 40% uh, income tax rate, your effective rate for property gains tax becomes something like 18%. Now, if a property deal does not make sense because of the property gains tax, you should not do it. Um, it. It comes back again to margin. You should have margin in a property, enough space to be paying all of these fees and still be making money. Yep. If not, you're probably paying too much for the property. Yes, or pay, paying too much to renovate it. Yes. Yep. So there are costs involved. Um, taxes are, is a way of life. It's something we'll have to do. It's not, it's not something you can really avoid legally in any ways. Um, so make sure what taxes, they, there are ways, um, but, but I don't want to give the financial advice. Speak to your accountant about that and go from there. I've been told that the $10 million home is very obtainable for entrepreneurs such as yourselves. First of all, I just want to explain that we are not experts on the US property market. We were there for a first exploratory trip. I was there a few times before on, on vacation mostly. Um, so one, I cannot really give advice on that. And then the question is quite vague. Entrepreneurs like ourselves, um, let's just clarify. I don't have 160 million. You don't have 160 million Rand. Uh, so we can't buy a 10 million Rand million dollar property at the moment nor would we want to. It's not a great investment. I think it's a super nice property to own as a trophy if you are staying in it with your family. Um, very nice, something I thought to share with you guys, but not something I would buy at this stage. Um, on the US property market, there 
and, and the entrepreneurial market, there are a lot of opportunities in the US. Um, but similarly, there are a lot of property and entrepreneurial opportunities in South Africa. So I would say the same guy would be able to buy a 10 or a 15 million Rand home in South Africa would also be able to buy a 10 or a 15 million dollar home in the US if his business was located there. So going from Rand to dollars, very expen expensive and difficult. But if you're making money there, it's different. You know, minimum wage are quite low, uh, are quite high compared to South Africa. But your average burger is also more expensive and your average home. So you, you'd have to be earning money there to make it something you'd want to buy. And secondly, it's not a good investment. It's a very nice home to live in with your family. Why Gaafontein and Ferry Glen areas? Would you consider Linwood, etc.? We have answered this before, but in essence, um, we need an area where you can buy for really cheap and sell for really expensive in one space, right next to each other. And Gaatfontein and Ferry Glen kind of provides that for the east of Pretoria, I think. And in, in scale. In scale. In the a lot of them. In the other areas, you normally get, you have a good high selling market, mm -hmm. but to obtain the property for the right amount is really difficult. Yes. So it does happen that we normally get a, well, sometimes we get a gem for a really cheap price. Like the Menlo Park House right Then now. it makes sense. Yes. The problem is also, if we're <coughs> buying a Linwood or whatever, for double the price we are buying in Gaarsfontein and we're spending double the amount that we are spending in Gaarsfontein but we are not making double the profit we would rather just do the lower priced Gaarsfontein properties because it's a way better investment of cash than to make the same profit but spend double as, um, as well as having a lower priced house in the, in the market yes, there's not a lot of people that can buy easier. 4 and 5 million we're rather selling to a two and three million rand market. Yes. So that's why.